going on, everybody? Dogman Dan here. We are in Warframe talking about Saren and Saren Prime. This is pretty much my Saren and Saren Prime build now that I can put Saren to the side because I have Saren Prime. Uh, I have put more forma into Saren Prime now to kind of level it the way that I want it to be. Um, now, this is going to be a little bit different of a video because we're going to kind of talk about a fully optimizing, uh, synergizing, if you will. Uh, crossing over everything and how I've pretty much played for three years uh, versus basically how you think I actually play. So uh, this is not a five minute video. I kind of try to explain a lot of it. Obviously there's going to be a lot of open areas and we'll talk about that when we get to like weapons and setups and stuff in that regards. Uh, because I'm only going to give you some highlights of some ideas of some things uh, but I'm not going to like get into crazy crazy uh, details uh, on it, but it'll just give you some ideas of how things work. Okay, so Saren Prime, we all know how it works. Um, I've always played it towards the spores as her first ability. I've always loved the ability to inflict damage uh, over time, over ticks, uh, the, the ability to pop the damage uh, and spread it across uh, to other enemies and, in, and inflict 100% status chance uh, of viral on all of them. Uh, we know her passive is status effect duration by 25%, so when it pops the uh, status, it's an actually 25% longer duration. We know that the viral status effect of her spores will reduce the target's current and maximum health by 50% for 7.5 seconds. And um, it's pretty long, obviously, because of the status effect duration from her passive. Uh, duration is affected by power duration, of course. First damage uh, bypasses obstacles in the environment and does not diminish with distance. Okay, so keep that in mind. They cast range and spread radius are affected by range, so the more range you have, the better off you're going to be. Um, <clears throat> we know that it will inflict uh, toxin proc as well. Popping a spore on an enemy will spread toxin damage along with that viral damage to surrounding enemies and the spore will have a 25% of the initial base damage that triggered the toxin proc added to the burst damage as viral damage with the 100% status chance for viral and toxin effects. Obviously power strength here as well is going to affect that. So your toxin status is going to be dealt 50% of that burst damage uh, over 11 ticks in 10 seconds just as FYI. Um, and if it's if you trigger multiple toxin procs uh, damaging an infected enemy, the initial base damage that triggered each individual proc will be combined when the spore's burst damage is calculated. But that's all we're going to get into in terms of that. So we are dealing all the time viral and toxin procs um, over the enemies all the time, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. We've got range, we've got duration, we've got strength. You've got to play all those in there to really get the optimal amount out of her. Uh, in regards to that, we can also put spores on top of molt um, and just keep stacking it on top of molt. Molt won't do. Uh, molt won't get hurt by the spores, uh, so we can keep st stacking it and stacking it. The enemies obviously will go to it as they hit it. They will grab that spore. They will get damaged by the spore, they will take the spores with them, so forth and so on. Same thing happens, toxin status gets spread everywhere. Um, so we've got all those good things. You can buff this with use of shielded ospreys, specters, mind controlled forms, that type of stuff. Uh, toxic Lash is going to be the same way, it's going to play in with that toxin damage if you're utilizing the Toxic Lash. Uh, the Toxic Lash is going to obviously pop uh, any of those spores and spread that as well. So there we go. We've got that. And of course, we've got the Miasma, which really, really helps pollute the environment uh, with the mist, inflecting corrosive damage per tick to enemies within a certain radius. And the damage will be affected by power strength, toxin, and viral status effects and molt. When you put Miasma on, if you have molt, molt will actually explode. It's insane how well this is really balanced overall with her powers. Now, keeping all this in mind, how do we really enhance her? And now a lot of people have seen me playing her 
uh, with uh, obviously my Vakor Heck with my uh, Telos Boltor. Uh, we'll start out in that range here. In terms of primary weapons, the reason that I choose, um, for the most part, I'm choosing one of three weapons that I've played with the most. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other weapons out there that can do this, but these are the most effective. Um, I enjoy the the Telos Bolt or duh, because what that does, it has the truth effect on it. The truth effect deals the gas damage. The gas damage will um, uh, take that status effect at range, of course, and you're going to deal that gas damage as a status. So you can't go wrong there. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. So your gas damage, I'm sorry, sorry. It's going to basically drop a poison cloud, which suffers, you know, the toxin damage within a certain range, five meter range, give or take. Forgive me, I had one of my kids run past me. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so that's why I like using the uh, Telos Boltor or even the uh, Telos AK Boltos if you're working secondaries, because you're going to get that truth effect, and that truth effect deals gas. The gas is covered with the status effect of Saren. Blah blah blah. You get how that works. It's really synergizing. Um, I like to use the Vehicor Heck just because I like to use the Vehicor Heck, uh, and I get that extra blast damage. Which, of course, that can also play very well with staggering enemies uh, when I'm using that. But that's not, like, really the most important reason to it. But I do just like using that. Uh, but the truth effect from the Arbiters with the gas damage that it deals. Awesome. Taking, let's say, the Ignis. Okay? The Ignis is a spread weapon. Uh, <clears throat> it's got good solid status chance on it. Obviously, it is a status effect weapon. Okay, uh, you can easily mod this up. You can easily mod this up with the combustion beam mod, which, of course, combustion beam will enemies killed will explode, damaging a plus 600 damage shortly after death. But if you've got spores on top of this, when you explode the enemy, the spores spread even more. So you get the point here. So any weapon that can carry combustion beam that has a high status chance that allows you to spread damage is going to be phenomenal with the use of spores in Saren Prime or Saren. Okay. Um, if you can mod it properly, you've got a beautiful synergy there. You've got the Acrid. Yes, I said it right. The, the Acrid. Okay. Acrid. Secondary weapon. It deals toxin damage. Its base is toxin damage. With the status or with the mod, the uh, toxic sequence mod, you can increase your status effect um, by 200% duration of that toxin damage. On top of Saren doing her toxin damage with the spores. You see how this is working? You just keep spreading those spores and spores and spores over and over. Uh, same thing when we come to melee weapons and this is when we're going to bring in toxic lash okay but when we're using like toxic lash with the spores you know anything that's a solid status effect status chance type of secondary weapon lacera is fucking beautiful with this okay and i'm actually finding the dark split sword to be kind of very nice it does a solid amount of status chance if you put everything on there i'm not saying it's 100 percent status chance but it does a solid status chance for me playing it. And I'm using it as a heavy melee sword, heavy weapon. And really the dark split sword, even though we can't... We won't get into that. Even though we can't, you know, switch between the styles mid-match, mid-game. The dark split sword is basically a copy of the Galantine. Only it replaces with radiation over physical damage. So now we've got solid, solid uh, elemental weapons here. Uh, and we can really play that up. We can go you know, radiation viral. We can go radiation corrosive. We can do a lot with it. Take that status effect along with her. And you can see where we're going with this. I mean, you have to think about your weapons to go with what you're using on your frame. To go with even your companions. This is why I love using sentinels. 
especially my Helios, because my Helios is modded for radiation and viral at all times. Uh, my Jin, love that thing for radiation and viral, and the fact that the Jin has a huge, huge range on it, longest range in terms of seeking out enemies and shooting them, and imagine the status effect and spores on top of that. So you can see where I'm possibly going with this, or hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. You get the idea where we're going with this. Um, and this is how I do this with all of my frames. I always choose certain weapons that are going to do certain things for me that are going to make it effective. But I found that Saren is just beautiful. Uh, I love the changes they made to her. They're perfectly fit for me based on how I've always played. Now it just enhances the abilities that I use more. Uh, I don't care uh, about... Uh, miasma um, not clearing a room like it used to because we know it's just a, a setup more or less for the spores to help spread the spores which are going to ultimately do the most damage anyway but um, that kind of gives you an idea I've just kind of given you ideas okay so things that are heavy elemental weapons of course are going to be beautiful with her uh, modding you know for gas toxin uh, for viral uh, are going to help spread um, in terms of the status effect on that. When we're moving, when we're talking about that, we can spread corrosive. We can spread anything that's the status if you proc, right? So if you proc, now you're going to have a duration on that proc, uh, and it's just it's just going to be crazy. You can you can go ahead and take this as far as you want to, um, and I think that that you'll enjoy it once you figure out what best way to play it. Of course. Uh, to fit your style fully 100%, but you can do that with anything. You've got quite a number of melee weapons out there that'll work well. You've got a couple of secondaries that'll work well, especially when we add in syndicate mods. Um, you've got your primaries. You've got your primary syndicate weapons. It's in particular, like I said, the, the truth effect weapons. So the Telos Boltor, the Telos AK Bolto, uh, with that already built-in truth augment. Obviously, there are... Uh, other weapons with the truth mods so the jaw sword burst in prime even uh, and the viper give you that truth effect as well uh, but it's not as consistent as straight up built into the weapons but uh, it's there so it's usable so that gas proc damage over time the doc the toxin damage over time just oh man anyway um, enough of me rambling. I'm hoping that you get the concept, the ideas of what I'm trying to uh, relate to you. And I kind of try to maybe do that in other frames as well. But I really wanted to take the time on this and, and kind of go into detail. So hopefully what you learn, and I'm going to show you my Saren Prime setup here in just a second. So you can see what the base is that we're working with before we add in all these extra uh, optimizations of weapons to go with it. Um... You know, hopefully you get the, the concept, the idea, that it's more than just one thing in the game. It's not all about, okay, I've got the most best, most overpowered uh, particular primary, and with this primary I can do everything. I don't have to rely on everything else. You want to rely on everything. You want to have the ability to have all of your weapons and gear work with you together. That's the ultimate way to play. If you've got everything working with you and for you, then you can't go wrong. And if you go down, you've got a secondary weapon that's going to help work with what you've already got. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're, we're trying to accomplish here. That's what I've always tried to accomplish. That's how I can last just as long as everybody else that goes and takes one weapon. I can take a combination of weapons. I can take a combination of weapons in Warframes build them together, get the best out of everything, in my opinion, my personal preferences of what I consider the best. It may not be the best for somebody else, but what I consider the best. And voila, I have the perfect setup. Anyway, let me hop you over here to uh, my Saren Prime setup itself so you can see where we're starting with. And uh, feel free to leave comments, questions below anytime. And hopefully, uh, hopefully it does help you out for the few people that'll actually watch this. Thanks again. Let's go take a look at that setup all right let's uh click this button here and we take a look see where i have set up like i said uh, helios set up here lacera acrid telos boltor and saren prime is where we really want to start with so hop on in here i went three former deep 
Let me just try to change this so you can see a little bit better here. Uh, I know I only have a 65% duration, but that just works for me. Um, it's just enough, and I'll show you on the main screen how we make it work. My focus, of course, efficiencies. I've got some efficiency. I needed the range, and I need as much power strength as I can, just the way I've built it. Uh, power is up at 800 on here. We got a health at 925. Armor is boosted up to 472. I'm not worried so much about shield. Um, and in addition, I am going to be using Toxic Flight again. We're adding a plus 225% toxin on the bullet jump. So I've been asked about that. How do I get that that goldish color or whatever when I when I bullet jump? Um, in several of my videos. Well, here it is. I'm using the Toxic Flight Exilus mod uh, because not only does it increase my obviously jump and aim glide and wall latch and all that, but the main purpose of this is to actually enhance my toxin proccing damage by using this toxin proc. It's not a lot, 225% of the base, whatever, uh, but it's enough that if they're caught behind you in the right situation, it's perfect. I am using rejuvenation here. I don't need to worry about using uh, energy siphon. One, because once I get my power pool up, it's freaking awesome. Two, because I've got Xenerik. So once I've got my power pool started, once I've activated that Xenerik, I'm not going to run out of power no matter what I do. Um, but as you can see, we went the high armor, high health, low on the shields. So we're not worried about that. And the armor and health obviously play into the same pool together. Um, so let's take a look over here. So I'm just going to show you here. So steel fiber maxed out. Prime flow, one before max. So you can go higher with that power, but you don't need to. I've got a max fleeting expertise, but that's going to take down my duration. But it's okay. The way I've played it, it's fine. Stretch, 45% power range. We need to optimize that range as best as we can here. Uh, we're going vitality maxed. I'm using a blind range at 81% power strength, which obviously I'm losing my power efficiency. So that's why I'm going ahead and I'm putting my fleeting expertise. Uh, so we do have some offsets, of course. Transient Fortitude, which is going to re reduce more of my power duration, but I wanted the additional power strength. Just the way I play, guys. And I went ahead and I put Prime Continuity in here, which is one below max. That extra 5% could help out if you wanted to max it out, but I've never actually maxed those two mods out. Never felt like I needed to go beyond that. But that's it. I mean, it's fairly simple. It takes three former to get in there and make it happen. Uh, but if we come over to the abilities... Okay, let's go ahead and I will show you first without the stats where we end up. We'll go ahead. Once we've added the stats on, okay, uh, we've got the spores, our damage per second at 46. We got our spread range at 23 with power range of 87 with a duration of just about 8 seconds. It's more than enough. Our initial spores are 3, 8 seconds, and since you can stack and keep spreading them, we are all good. Okay, our molt damage is 924 again remember we're going to take our spores and spread that on top of molt and let that do our work for you almost almost 1200 health here 26 second duration and a range of 14 and a half meters for the enemies to see her the molt and guided towards the molt and pretty much kill themselves toxic lash of damage blocking is 0.92 okay our damage multiplier 1.69 and our duration is 20 seconds. This is the lowest duration when we're terms of how we're going to play it out. Um, but I don't use Toxic Glass a lot right now. I don't have a straight up melee build for her. Otherwise, I would have totally increased my duration uh, to make it much easier. And then Miasma here, or Miasma, whatever you want to call it, with 808 damage per second. Duration is only 2 seconds, but the range is 21, almost 22 meters. And it works enough that I can I can hit it up a couple times uh, with an 85% or an 85 power pool here. 43 here, 43 here, and only 21 here in terms of my energy used. And since I'm constantly with the Xenerik, I'm regenerating my energy anyway. This just all plays in. So hopefully this is enough to get you guys started and figure out how she plays, how she works, and you can enjoy it. Um, hopefully I answered some questions, insight into how I play a little bit more. At any point, comments, questions below as always. Uh, I will catch you guys in future episodes. Till then, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.